<laughs> I think I need a new set of tyres on it guys. Hi everyone, welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome back to the 458. Yep, we got it out of storage for 2023. It's been about three or four months in storage now. So today we're going to take it out on its first drive for 2023. We're going to give you a bit of an update on the 458. Because the last car I drove was the GT3, we're going to be able to do a bit of a comparison between the 458 and the GT3 as well, which is very interesting, and get a bit of sanity back into my head from driving that awesome GT3. And also we're going to give you a bit of an update on the 458 with regards to tyres and what we're going to be doing with the car a bit later on in the year. So keep watching guys if you want to hear a bit about a trip we're going to be doing later on in the year and we're going to be bringing you with us. To the roads we used to review the GT3. Why are we doing that? Well, that car blew me away so much, I thought I've got to get my sanity back again and get the 458 out on the same roads just to make sure I shouldn't be owning a GT3 and the Amira. Remember, I haven't driven the 458 for quite some months now because it's been in winter storage. Thankfully, it's renewed my belief in the 458 again because that GT3 was so bloody good. But you can, you know, that, that GT3, I'm definitely going to own a GT3, preferably as a second car to the 458. But... You see, you get that kick in your back when you change gear in the 458 that you just don't get in the GT3. And that's because the PDK is so, so incredibly well engineered and it's just so functional being German design it just hasn't got that it just hasn't got that passion that a Ferrari has but that GT3 was bloody awesome gotta hand it to it to make me really have a think about whether or not the 458 should still be in the garage or whether or not I should be owning the GT3 yeah, there's obviously very different looks about the car. This is clearly shouting supercar all the time, as I as I said in the GT3 review. I'll drop a link in the in the description below if you haven't seen the GT3 review already. But check out that video, especially towards the end, how I summarise the differences between the 458 and the GT3. But clearly, the the 458 screams supercar as soon as you're in it, um, with the way how it feels, the way it looks, um, and the way it drives and the steering is definitely a lot faster in the 458. But in the GT3, the, the suspension is, is a little bit more, um, more rigid. It's definitely harsher in the GT3, and that's not mean to say it's harsh, but it's definitely harsher than the 458. It's quite noticeable when I'm driving, like for example, I'm driving, this shouldn't necessarily be really driving with one hand, but if I'm driving with one hand and I hit a little pivot in the road, I've got bumpy road mode on at the moment in the 458, it doesn't tend to it doesn't tend to pull the steering at all you don't get any sort of tracking in the 458 you get a little bit of that with the gt3 because the suspension's harsher it's great to be able back out in the 458 again though <laughs> So these tyres are around seven years old. There's enough tread on these tyres, but they're P0s, whereas my Michelin Pilot Sport 4S is brand new at home, still with the stickers on, um, and they are K1s as well. So I need to get those put on the car because um, driving this a bit lively, when I'm punching it a bit in second and third, you can feel it snake on the back. So obviously the traction control's um, catching it, but uh, um, that GT3 never did that. But then of course with the GT3, you've got the engine right over the back of the rear axle. So you're going to get all that additional traction um, because you're going to get all that, all that mechanical, or you're going to get all that mechanical stability automatic there um, because of the weight of the engine on the back of the rear axle. <laughs> Dead 
definitely faster than the GT3, but I've not taken anything away from that GT3. That GT3, I bloody love it, and I'm definitely going to own one. And it will be a 991.1 or 991.2, so it'll be a 991 that I'll own. But, um, but this is bloody awesome. on it guys so as I mentioned in my in my tire sidewall video I'm gonna put two four fives on the front of this car um, as opposed to the standard which are two three fives and the reason I'm doing that is because the, in effect the 245 is slightly wider tire it means you've got more tread on the on the tarmac and means obviously you'll get more traction so that's a recommendation that I've been given as well that a lot of people do go over to 245s um, in replacement of the 235s which is a standard OEM side which is a standard OEM size for the 458s and they're K1 rated fronts and rears that I've got as well obviously 295s on the rears so that would be pretty cool um, when I've got those tyres on here and um, the traction will be a lot better it's um, slipping at the moment as you can see um, hopefully you've seen that and caught that on the video you can't really miss it um, but uh, that will be improved immensely when I've got the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's on so what's it like driving the 458 again well bloody awesome guys we're doing a Swiss trip, so here's a little bit of insider information for you. We're doing a Swiss Alps trip in June this year. So obviously we'll be taking you along to that journey. So we're gonna capture some great footage in the Swiss Alps, some great driving footage, and some other bits and pieces added in as well. And we're going with some guys, you'll recognize some of the cars that we'll be going with, but some new people that we'll be going with as well. So some, some new car content there as well for you. And that'll be a fantastic journey. So that all that content will be coming as well in the near future definitely feel when driving this 458 compared to the GT3 the different in traction just gonna put it back into normal sport mode as well now you can definitely feel the difference in traction um, with the GT3 with that weight slung over the back this is um, a lot more tail happy and again the tires will make a lot of difference um, but it does make quite a bit of difference with the GT3 with that weight over the back um, I didn't go crazy pushing that car for obvious reasons it's not my car but I couldn't feel it unsettling at all when I was going around the corners whereas obviously I can in this also in the 458 you're sat low um, you're sat a bit higher in the GT3 but some of that could be or a lot of that could be to do with the fact that that particular 991 GT3 had comfort seats and this has got the race seats where you are automatically sat lower in the race seats they designed modern Porsches so people who are six foot four can easily get in them and have plenty of leg room and plenty of height plenty of height room or head room I should say height room sound bloody awesome interestingly guys if you check that GT3 video out you'll notice that the sound in the GT3 was a lot better on the drive-bys 
rather than when the, ex when the camera was directly on the exhaust, which is quite interesting. So clearly there's a characteristic from the sound, from the exhaust sound of the GT3 and how it, it mixes in with the surroundings. And that may be because it's doing some sort of X-pipe mixing of the sound from the two different banks. Obviously it's a boxer engine, it's not a V8, but you've still got two different sections in the V, in the, you've still got two different sections in the six cylinder boxer engine where they're separated with the way how the exhaust emissions um, are directed outside of the of the block so it may be that there's some sort of mixer going on there that that creates and develops that that better sound that richer uh, more performance sound rather than direct from the exhaust it's got to be that sort of characteristic can be can be nothing else really was the last sports slash supercar that I, that I drove before driving this by the way. Driving them pretty much back to back, it really consolidates the fact that I made the right decision buying the 458. I mean who can make a bad decision buying the 458 but it also consolidates the fact, the fact of how good the GT3 is as well because for the GT3 to get close to a 458 that's going something, it really is. Of course that's really saying something when you consider that a GT3 is about 70 grand cheaper than the, the, the value of this car. A 991.1 is going to cost you circa around 90 to 105 grand depending on the spec, the age, and whether it's uh, a 991.1 or a 991.2. A 991.2 would cost you about 40 grand more than a 1.1 on average. there you have it first drive in the 458 for this year for 2023 and is it still cool is it still awesome yep it bloody is in many ways it's good to have a layoff from driving these types of cars i haven't been driving it for around three or four months because this sort of feeling and this sort of passion and this sort of feedback with a 488 or an F8 it just isn't there If you enjoyed the video please make sure you give it a thumbs up guys very important for the good old youtube algorithm if you'd like your car to be featured on the channel whether it be a supercar or a sports car please drop us an email at the email address below and we'll get back to you if you're not subscribed please think about subscribing again very important to us being a small channel relatively small channel still at the moment thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll catch you in the next video